In this video, I'm going to go over a little bit about the Page Properties panel. Now, for those of you that haven't opened this yet, you can go to your window drop down menu in Dreamweaver, and there's an option called Properties. Now, when you first open it, I'm going to go ahead and unsnap mine for a second. It may just be this free floating panel, which is fine. Because I'm more of an old school Dreamweaver user, we are we are used to actually kind of snapping it down here at the bottom. Now, just so you're aware, anytime you want to snap a panel in Dreamweaver, you can go and just snap along the base here, and it'll turn blue whenever you're moving your panels around. Now, let me go ahead here. I'm going to zoom in here just so you can see it a little bit better here in the video. I wanted to talk about the panel itself. I'm not going to go too in-depth this video on the upper portions here. What I wanted to talk about was the two tab options, but more specifically this page properties here. So I'll get to that in a moment here. The properties panel over the years in Dreamweaver has actually evolved whereby once we only had this HTML portion of it and we didn't have this sub labeling here. But now we have both for hypertext markup language and cascading style sheets. We are going to get into cascading style sheets in a future video. For today, I want to focus on the HTML side of things. Now, first thing I want to point out before we jump into page properties is here is that document title. So again, your document title is what appears on the tab in the web browser. So you do have the opportunity, if you so choose, you can change your tab here. For example, I could change this to cats are nifty. And now whenever I preview my page, it's going to go ahead and show that instead of the original. So let me go ahead and zoom back out here because what I want to do is we're going to open our page property panel. Now a page properties, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in again so you can see it a little bit better. What we have here is tons of just preset options here as far as links, background images, stuff like that. We're going to take this a little bit on the slower side though to get you started. Really, most things that I want you to start getting comfortable with as we move forward here is the cascading style sheet side of stuff. This doesn't change how you do things. You're still going to be clicking. It's not like you have to start scripting or anything like that. But I am just going to leave it on the default appearance with the parentheses CSS here. And notice on the right hand side here, you have a lot of different options here that you can work with. This, uh, as far as the course is concerned, for those of you who are taking my courses, we're going to get into setting imagery on the web page next class. So we're going to really focus in here and zoom in on page font, size, text color, and background color. So let's start off at the very beginning here, the page font, default font. The default font, while it may seem like you can see up here a little bit, like for me, it's Times New Roman. However, the default font, depending on a user's browser and a user's settings, this may be something completely different. So if I go ahead and zoom out for a second here, let me bring up my little notepad here so that I can draw this out for you. Now, we normally, so if I'm over here, let me go ahead and make sure I have my layer. I've got my color and I've got my pencil. Good stuff. And we're going to change my flow. Okay. So this is me over here working on my PC. Now, on my PC, the default fonts that I like to use in my web browser is Times New Roman, let's say. However, I go ahead and let's say, here's the server that I'm hosting my website on so the whole world can now see it. And let's say there's a person B 
over here. So I have person's PC. But for whatever reason, uh, there, and there's many reasons people would do this, they've changed, for their web browsers, they have changed their default font, uh, let's say to Verdana. Now, my web page looks one way on my computer, but then looks a totally different way or may have a different layout on person B's PC. So as far as fonts go, this can be a little bit tricky because of the fact that depending on X height, depending on kerning and leading as far as the font is concerned, this can completely throw off our layout on our web page. And unfortunately, we don't have control over this side as designers. We can do our best as far as setting declarations of what we want to do or what we want to have displayed, but it's not like we can go to person's PC and make it display the way that we want it and kind of force feed it. There was an era with that as far as web browsers were concerned. We called that the browser wars. If anybody remembers where you'd have something at the bottom of a page like best viewed in Internet Explorer or best viewed in Netscape. That's what I was talking, that's what I'm talking about there, is there were certain ways and designs and chunks of code that we would use to make, and we kind of just picked a web browser that we were hoping the rest of the world used. So to come back to it here, what we actually do then, let me zoom back in to show you for page fonts. So it isn't absolutely necessary. You don't need to you, you know, change from default font. But if you click on the drop down here, what you're going to see here is you are going to see a very, very long list of fonts here. As we continue on, yes, you will have the options of kind of picking out and setting up these lists yourself. But I want to talk about the lists. These lists are going from the very first font here, and this is the one that you are wanting the most to appear. And then what it does is it goes through and it says, okay, let's say for sake of argument, I'll go with uh, Baskerville because I like Baskerville. Baskerville is not on the user's computer. Okay, well then let's try to find Palatino Linotype. And let's say it does find that. That's the font it uses, but let's say it can't find it. So we're like, okay, you know what? Palatino. Still can't find it. Uh, okay, Century School Book L. Still can't find that? Oh dear. Okay, let's try Times New Roman. And for some weird reason, the computer doesn't even have Times New Roman on it. That's where Serif, and even down here, Sans Serif comes into play, where at that point we're just saying, give me a Serif font. I don't care which one. So this is a way that we will actually try to negate issues that we can run into. So for this real quick here, I'll stick with Baskerville. And when you set a text set or a font set like this, each of these are going to become active here, these side ones, where you can choose as far as oblique, italic, or normal. You can set that specifically, and you can also set the font weight. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and say apply. And actually, you can kind of see it right at the top here. So it shifted all of my text into Baskerville, which is fine. So that brings me now to size. Size is a tricky thing as far as working in web design. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with print design, you know that we often work in points, picas, Ms, etc. The thing is, though, we are not looking at this from a let's print this document out because 99% of the time somebody is going to be looking at your web page on some sort of digital device we work in a pixel based environment so for instance if I say 16 pixels here and I'll go ahead and say apply this is what can throw folks who are new to web design off. Notice how much smaller that is versus say, yes, 
I can click here and say 16 point. This becomes a little bit tricky and I'll get into this in the next video when I talk about DPI and screen resolutions and measurements and pixels because of the fact that whenever you're measuring, when it comes to a size, that's not, we don't really measure in points. You want to stay as consistent as possible with the pixels or even another big one we use later on is percentages. Now, just as a quick side note, I'll talk about this again, though. If you want it to be one real world inch, just a fun fact, it is 72 pixels to the inch. So if you are working in a 72 pixels per inch environment, you say 72. I say apply and you can see how much larger my typeface got because now it's measuring in inches. So I am going to shave this back down a little bit here though. Let's go to like 24 pixels. There we go. As a side note, yes, if you like, you can also use kind of large XX large. Those are just kind of presets there, but I'm going to go back to like 18 here. Yeah, that's good for me. Okay. Now, the other two items I wanted to talk about in this video was text color. Text color and actually background color, they're kind of the same elements here. You have a drop down box, but you also have an area that you could type in colors if you so choose. So for example, like if I type red and say apply, you see that it changes it to red, or if I say white. I wanna point out that for the longest time, we really didn't have this preset notion of terminology of just saying, you know, white, blue, green, uh, things like that. What we would actually do, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this out, is like for background color, we would focus on down here what is called a hexadecimal value. Now, you also have different color modes that if you want to switch to RGBA, which is red, green, blue, and alpha, and then hue, saturation, luminance, and alpha. I got to be honest, the two biggest color measurements I see in web in this day and age is still the hex and the RGBA. However, with the addition of having terms like red, green, blue, and I will share a link uh, to W3Schools, they, they have like the impressive all list of all of the different colors there. Um, that's another way that you can do that. But you could come in here and do, you know, the color picker if you preferred, and just kind of pick the color, apply, and you can see that it puts that value there. We can do the same exact thing with the text. So I could come under the text here, do like a really, really dark brown, sorry about that, apply, and let's go ahead and zoom out and take a look at our page here. So you can see I've added a little bit of finesse to the document here. So that's the page properties panel. At any point in time, you can come in and change around and work with that. Uh, in case anybody is interested, I'm gonna go ahead and save this document. I am gonna go into the split view just in case anybody's interested. What happened is this information was now added for you. So all of this coding was done for you as far as the design goes didn't even have to do anything. We were able to stay directly in design view. There is a lot more that you can do with this. Finally, with this lecture here, I'd like to come back down and talk a little bit about your browsers here. So for Google Chrome, if I go ahead and open in Google Chrome, as you can see, I mean, Honestly, it's pretty similar here. We've got a good, you know, design to browser layout. But what I'm also going to do here is I'm also going to locate, let's see if it'll let me open up Edge. 
and let me see if I can minimize edge out here and let's get my there we go my Google back and this is actually a pretty good example here and I'll try to make these about the same size here Overall, we've got a pretty good layout here between the two browsers. I've been lazy and haven't downloaded Firefox to test. Um, there are numerous web browsers out there, and that's one thing as a web developer you may find yourself doing is, you know, you're testing on multiple web browsers. Uh, you know, not even just Firefox, uh, Edge, and Chrome, you know, but also you have to take in consideration like Safari for Macs, Opera. Um, there's even really, really obscure ones like Vivaldi. You know, so it's not uncommon as a web designer that you're downloading multiple browsers just to test in, to make sure that you have a consistent layout across all of the web browsers. But that takes you through as far as the page properties, just talking a little bit about previewing and adding a little bit of you know, pizzazz to uh, your basic website.